Who doesn't love bread? I love bread, but a lot of us don't have the time to make bread. So today I'm gonna to show you a super easy recipe for focaccia that I make at home that uses five ingredients, takes half an hour to prepare, and three hours from start to finish. So let's get started. you but I love bread. I love bread with all my meals, I love bread in the morning, I love bread as a late night snack and I especially love focaccia because it sometimes has those like crispy edges and it's kind of oily which I actually really love and today's recipe is like another Bon Appetit recipe that I've taken and made my own um, and to start the first thing we need to do is proof our yeast. So I have two and a half cups of warm water, make sure it's not too hot not too cold, you don't want to kill the yeast, but you also want to make sure that it blooms. And yeast loves sugar. So what I have is two teaspoons of sugar that I'm going to put in my two and a half cups of warm water. Uh, you can also use honey. And I have two and a quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast. What's the difference between fresh yeast and dry active yeast? Fresh yeast comes like in a, like in a block, Doug, like a cake block. Um, and you have to keep it in the fridge and it has like a really like short shelf life. Uh, we used to use it at work a lot, but now we use dry active just because it makes life a little bit easier. Um, I'm not a baker, so we'd have to ask a baker. We may have to bring Bailey on to talk about yeast. I just know that yeast goes in bread. I'm just gonna mix it. And this is the fun part that I like to do is I like to watch it sort of come alive as it like bubbles and comes up to the top. Now that we know that our yeast is alive, I'm going to transfer it into this very large metal bowl. I don't know about you, but I know that I've often baked things that call for yeast, and I didn't check to see if my yeast was alive, and then when I went to bake it, it was very flat and sad. As for the flour, there's all-purpose, and I'm also using some Italian double zero. You can, and I have, done the focaccia 100% all-purpose. I've done it 100% double zero. But for me and for my family, we really like it when I make it like half and half. So I'm going to do, um, um, I know, Doug, you love watching me measure stuff. Yeah, you're always uh, <laughs> the queen of measurement. The queen of measurements. I'm going to do two, because it's five cups flour total. I'm going to do two, I'm going to do two of all-purpose. How about that? I'm going to do two of all purpose and I'm going to do three of double zero, Doug. How about that? So five cups total. It's five cups total. So you all can right. mix and match a little bit. Mix and match. I've done it before. You know, you've, you've seen it where I've done it with just one or the other. So, But the double zero, um, this one is good for pasta and for pizza dough and for focaccia. So last but not least is salt. I don't know if you've ever had bread and it's like, it's great, but it's not seasoned. So I'm gonna add, I use, I use kosher salt at home as we do as the restaurant. I'm gonna add one, two, three and a half um, teaspoons of salt. Now, I'm gonna just mix this. Honestly, you don't even have to knead it. I swear, it's the most amazing focaccia I've ever made. So I did add about two tablespoons of olive oil to my dough, and I've also decided to use my hands because I like using my hands. As you can tell, it's quite a shaggy dough. Don't worry, you don't need to knead it. It doesn't need to be smooth. I've just mixed it until everything is incorporated. I am gonna add a little bit more olive oil, probably about another two tablespoons. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's not. Just enough to kind of cover the bottom of the bowl, cover my dough so that it doesn't stick. Now I'm going to put saran wrap on top of my bowl, making sure that air can't get in. I'm gonna put it into my oven. I have it on my proofing mode, and it'll proof for about 30 minutes to an hour until it doubles in size. What if you don't have proofing mode on your oven? If you don't have proofing mode, you can just put it somewhere warm, like on top of a fridge. But in the original recipe, they actually, once you mixed it, you could just put it in the fridge for 24 hours, and then you would bake it but I had to shorten it quite a bit because at the end of the day, Doug, we have kids, we have a business, and I don't have 24 hours to wait for bread. Well, it's amazing because sometimes you will come home from work 
like, you know, late afternoon and you'll have focaccia ready for dinner, which is incredible. I love that. It makes me very popular at dinner time that night. My dough has been proofing about half an hour, Doug, I'd it's say. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. So I don't know if, Doug, if you want to take a picture of this. And this is the best part of anything with the dough is putting your hands in it. I have a 9 by 13 pan that I've liberally put olive oil in. And liberally, I mean liberally. I'm going to grease my hands up. I'm going to, this is my favorite part. Ah. Punch it down. Punch it down. Not even punch it, but it's just like such a beautiful, amazing, elastic, fun dough. Fun dough. That's a new word. It's a fun word. Fun dough. So I'm just going to stretch it so that it fits into my pan. And then what I'm going to do is wait until my oven comes up to 450 degrees, which takes about 15, 10, 15 minutes. And then we are going to come back. We're going to press it down, add a little bit more olive oil, yes, more olive oil, and some mold and salt, and then we're going to bake it. My oven is at 450. My dough has just sort of risen a little bit more. It is beautiful. It is bubbly, which I really love. This is the fun part. I'm going to dimple my dough. You don't have to. I'm going to dimple it so I've got some nice holes. All that olive oil that is in my pan is going into those holes as well. Mold and salt, a beautiful flaky salt. I'm going to generously add this on top. You could do herbs, you could do cheese, you could do dried fruits like a dried cherry or a cranberry or a raisin. You could add lemon zest, anything that you want you can put in or on your focaccia. What are you looking for and how do you know when it's done? It's going to be a nice golden brown. If you take up an edge, you'll see that it's nice and crispy on the bottom. Um, and even that when you touch it, it's not like super soft. It gives a little bit of a bounce back. Cool. All right, I'm going to put this in my 450 degree oven. And my oven takes about 25 to 35 minutes, depending. Yum. It's been in here for half an hour. And it smells so good. Looking in here. pretty good, Doug. Can't wait to try oh, yeah. this. All right. See, beautiful color. It's nice and crispy. Now trying to get it out of the pan. I like to take it out of the pan, Doug, just so you know, right away, because I don't want it to get like moist on the bottom and then it'll get kind of like soft and soggy. Always, it's always hot. I never let it cool. Here we go. Boom, look at that. Beautiful. All right, Doug, why don't you come and try the focaccia? Right. I'm gonna cut it. Coming in. Coming in hot. That's right. So. So. Is it still smoking hot right now? Well, it's hot, but it's, you can eat it. Okay. Like here. I'm on a very tight time frame yes, right now. Yes, I know you're now. on a very tight time frame. You're going to play squash with our son. But, you know, we'll be Don't fine. Don't worry, we'll be fine. Look, there you go. Ooh, Ooh look damn. at that. Look at that. Let me have a sniff. Shove it in your face. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Look, there you no, go. but you know what? This is so good, and it's like, I find when you make this, it actually holds up really well the next day. Well, it's perfect the next day for toast. If not better sometimes, and I also find mm. that in a few days. Oh, this is the crunchy crispiness. Um, oh yeah, perfect. In a few days, if you still haven't eaten it all, which is unusual, it does make awesome croutons too. Yeah. So for a crouton salad, as my son calls it, yeah, which is basically Caesar salad. You know, this is a great version of focaccia. The one that we make at work is definitely quite a bit different than this. Um, but as far as like a home version, which you can whip up in a few hours, I love this recipe. Yeah. Um, this has been a godsend, like during COVID and like for the past year. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like so easy for me to make at the end of the day, and everybody's happy when they like they like to get hot bread. It's awesome. Well, Okay, well, thank you guys. Thank you. Another episode down. This one wasn't as healthy as the last few, maybe. I don't know. Does not matter? Who cares? I'm not sure. But it just goes to show that making bread from scratch is super easy. If I can do it, and I'm not a great baker, then anyone can do it. Thanks, folks. We'll be in touch soon. Stay tuned. Until the next time. Until the toodaloo. next time. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. All, All that right. kind of weird All right, stuff. Doug. What, did the ur what did the urban peasant used to say? Toodaloo? 
All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.